Hi everyone, this is the Bicycle Lady here, and I'm happy you've joined me. This is my first video, so please bear with me. Uh, I just thought I'd put a little something together to let you know who I am. Now, how did I get the name Bicycle Lady? Well, I did volunteer work in which I did repairs uh, for various organizations of their clients' bicycles, one being the homeless. And this was quite rewarding. Sometimes it was good where they used the bicycle to get to work, and sometimes it wasn't so good when they sold their bicycle for to buy things that weren't so good for them. But overall, it was a very good experience. And like I like to say, I can repair a bicycle from the bearings on through the spokes and on up, hubs and spokes. So down to the very smallest uh, part, I can take it and and clean it up, recondition it, and put it back together and get it working even better than it was before. All right. On this channel that I'm doing, uh, it's called The Bicycle Lady and Things because we're going to do various things that I want to do and I think I'll enjoy doing. And I'm just asking you to come along for the journey. One being drawing. I want to reinforce my drawing skills constantly doing that. I do also uh, graphite portraits and other paintings but we'll get into that more later and uh, so I'm always working on my skills and I want to keep them up and uh, it's time now to go back and start from the very basics and we're going to be starting that uh, at the next video the next thing would be uh, I'm going to go around and see people and do things kind of hang out with other people and bicycle things so we're going to check out the bicycle hangouts and the things and the rides to do around South Florida, especially in Broward. And uh, then there's also sightseeing and seeing, the, uh, seeing what there is to see and do from a tourist point of view. I have never done that, even though I've lived in South Florida for over 20 years. And I think it's going to be fun to do that. And I want to do it from the bicycle. And a uh, combination of the bicycle and the mass transit, we'll see what we can really experience and, and come along for that journey as well. Then there's going to be an additional um, item or category I should say in the near future. Um, as you can tell right now you're not seeing me or my face. Uh, there's a reason for it because I'm doing this very much with one camera that's mounted so it's a little hard to do that. And in the near future hopefully we're going to be uh, bringing in another interest of mine that I'm going to invite you along for the journey with. And, and hopefully you'll support me on that journey as well. Uh, the other thing is we have over here, he may come over to visit and say hello. That's my cat. His name is Bo. That's B-E-A-U, also known as Mr. Bo. And honor Mr. Pump, uh, one of the other YouTubers out there. Um, he's with Bicycle. Bike Man for You. I get a real kick out of watching them. They have some good information on bicycles and bicycle repairs and so forth. So check them out. And uh, Mr. Bo may may make his debut this this video, or he may be another one. You know, he kind of follows his own schedule there. He's also known as the Bo Stir, as in B A U S T E R. Bo Stir. Okay. So what we're going to do is making make a way to use the pencil down to the very last bit uh, number one that saves money number two it's kinda nice not to be wasteful and when you have a good pencil you just it's, it's good just continue to use it until you can't use it again anymore so that's where the paper extenders come in and paper extenders have been made throughout the years uh, one of the most basic extenders was made with a brass tube or some type of reed or tube uh, and then you use some string to tie, you know, slit it and then tie it down with some string or have some wire or whatever. And this is, uh, you know, I mean, way back hundreds of years you had something similar to this. Maybe out of reed, maybe out of a brass tube. And then you have these slide compressed fitterings on it. You can see where the two slots are. This right now has like a solid graphite in there. But um, it can be a little heavy. You can feel a little bit of edge there where it's cut. So, and it's a little bit heavier in in the hand than others. Uh, that's one type of extender. Another common type of extenders are these. Uh, they're made by, this is two different companies, you know, different lengths. Uh, that's the way they're made. And you can see this has been around a little while. It doesn't take long for those to start looking like that. 
and uh, it, it still has this ring type of a affair and it has one slot that lets that compress. But the problem with that is not all pencils will fit in it. Like this pencil will fit in there really nicely and get really snug. Another pencil, and this is another graphite pencil, it will roll around. The only way you can get around that is maybe put a little tape on the end. The other thing is if you're using color pencils, for example, here's a color pencil and it just doesn't fit in there. It, you know, other brands, here's another brand. Uh, no, that's not a color pencil. Uh, but you get, get, get the gist of my name. Here's one. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize I had one so old. Prismacolor when it was made by Eagle. That's several companies back. Um, so, it depends. So you have different, and then you also have the solid graphite. Definitely you want to use that down to the quick, but look, it, it, it won't fit in there. It's just a little bit too large. You'll bend it all out of shape and ruin it. So, what can you do? Well, a company came out where you can get or buy them and there's two different sizes. One that will allow you, as you can see here, one here, this one here, has a smaller hole than this one. And they're made just like a drill chuck where you have the four fingers and then you screw on this collar and that tightens it down around the pencil. So you could put the pencil in, put it down here, tighten it down. That's the one size here. And that. Now if you tried to do the same thing with this one, with the si same size pencil, like this one here, I'm going to tell you up front, it's not going to tighten down that well. Uh, it will tighten down somewhat. You see, you know, you can do it, but it will still move. That's the reason why they made the two different sizes. Now the other thing is, what makes it nice, is this size here won't take this, but it, this one will. Let me to take that off a little bit, as you can see, that one will. What are you looking at here, investment-wise? This is another one that's made by a company that makes uh, drawing pencils and also solid graphite pencils and you can see that this works perfectly. Granted, it's made for this type of pencil. Uh, it's made by that company. It's actually quite nice in the hand, as long as you don't mind the metal ring and that roughness there. And some people don't like that. So when you're looking at these type of uh, pencil extenders, they're escaping here. So when, when you are looking when you're looking at these type of extenders, you can start looking at some money. Something like this, you may start around three fifty, four dollars and go up. Um, the card of these is eight to ten dollars. That may change, it may be more, I don't know. I, I don't remember what this is, I've had it so long. Uh, but you're talking about quite a bit of money, because if you get into color pencil art and you start doing the color pencil paintings, you know, uh, we call them paintings because it is paintings. It's not just sketching. It's laying down the color and, and and how vibrant the color is and everything setting it up. It is a painting. And when you start getting to that, you're, you're talking about having at least, you really want around a dozen extenders on hand that fit your color pencils. Brands. So you, I mean, a dozen, maybe two dozen even. Uh, so you're talking about a fair amount of money there. Plus, you still have to contain, contend with the weight and the roughness of these these rings on these. And uh, grab it. So I was looking at it. I'm going, hmm. I came up with a way to make a paper extender. Now here's you can see I have this pencil and I probably could get well, some more sharpenings out of that. It's getting close, but I mean it's still got a fair amount of use in it. And good usable lead. And that this was while uh, made tight. You can see it doesn't come out. In this particular case it doesn't really move that much either. 
and it has a nice long because I made it the length I wanted uh, handle and then this is the paper collar that joins this handle with so this when it's the pencil slips in there and I can have control over doing this or working from this point of view this way um, you know people hold pencils and, and some don't like you doing it this way because it's too much other people they have, I've seen one that does beautiful graphite lay down with the gradation of shades using this type of method and he even said that he stops using his pencils a little past halfway because he can no longer control them because it gets to the point where there's it's not resting on his hand right and he doesn't have control so you're looking at, at a pencil about like this which is not quite halfway used yet now a little bit more about down to here he would be looking to get rid of the pencil because he no longer had control because this would flop around and, and so forth and he didn't like the uh, the extenders because of the weight and the roughness of the rings and that's understandable that can't interfere with it but when you have something like this or in this case, if you didn't want this, this is a very smooth transition. You, you hardly feel it at all. Or you can uh, fill it in with paper, and you won't feel it. It's the same. And actually, this pencil extender is about the weight of a pencil or slightly li lighter. So I think it's the best of things. It's cheap. It's easy to make. Helps get the job done. It feels smooth in the hand. You know, you can make as many as you want. It's just pretty simple. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go over what it takes to make it. The essential supplies are this. Uh, you need, I would use a fairly cheap paper. I, I have printer paper, copy paper, and printing and so forth. A little bit of white glue. I'm not promoting any particular brand, but I happen to get uh, this on 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 sale here so I use it um, and uh, then also something to roll the paper on so you can make this here that way you can make this here that's the uh, handle uh, pencil extender handle body as I call it a ruler I usually eyeball, but uh, some people may want to measure things out when they make the, the strips, either cut or tear the strip of papers to make this. So you can have just a ruler and a pair of scissors to trim everything up with. All right, let's get to it. Uh, what you need is you take the copy paper. Now, I like making them a little bit long and then tri trimming them after afterwards. And uh, so I will take, from experience of doing this, I will take a piece of copy paper and I will fold it in half. I believe that's called lengthwise. Or is that across the width? Well, anyway, I take, take it and fold it like that. I... If you don't know what this is, this is a bone folder. I've had it forever. If you're into any type of paper art, uh, folding or book binding, whatever, uh, you know about this. It's not essential. I, I, I just find it useful and to get a good crease. So I had it there. I thought I'd use it. And I just tear it. Some people don't like it, rolling up paper with teared edges. Um, it's up to you. To me, it doesn't bother me at all. Now, it is hard to roll an edge on top of itself without having something there. And so I looked around to what I could use. I didn't have any skiers, but I am the bike lady. So I had some old bicycle spokes. And you really can't reuse the bicycle spoke. Number one, this one you couldn't because it was actually broke at the end. And out the other end, there's some, uh, some threads. But it makes for a very nice place to start uh, to roll up your paper and uh, to make the uh, paper handle on your pencil extender. So let's do that now. And so you'll see me kind of 
it's not quite a full crease, but it's, it, it is there, and that just helps me get going. And you'll see me kind of start out, try and square this up, get the paper up around it, and then we'll push it down and see if we can get this going here. Now, sometimes it's hard to do it down on a table. You can pick it up and roll it between your fingers and thumb, something like this. Uh, it's just whatever is the most comfortable for you to do. Now, I usually roll it a few times. As you can tell, I, I've taken it up and I'm rolling between my fingers and thumb. It's just an easy way for me to get everything started. Now I'm going to see about pulling it tight make sure I've got even you know get as much you know tension and you don't want anything uh, too loose and at which time I am now going to put some glue because I've got a couple rolls on here now you can use glue straight from the bottle however I think it really works better with when the glue is thinned out um, I put it in a little bottle I think I got it from the art store from some time ago I just keep using it and uh, I made a mixture of uh, two-thirds glue to one-third water, or thereabouts, very close to it. I don't get all crazy and measure it. I just kind of eyeball it. I'll put a little glue on here, and this is just a, you can use a pencil. You can even use your fingers. I just like using this uh, pen, uh, this coffee uh, st steering, uh, stirring cup. Uh, pen, oh, excuse me. I just like using this coffee stirring stick and you know how it is you get coffee and you'll pick up a couple sticks and then you end up only using it and you usually have one or two left over well I don't just throw those out I bring them home and I use them um, and this is one of the uses I found for them I just hated to throw anything like that out you could use a popsicle stick would do the same thing uh, at any rate all right, now we're getting this going pretty good. The tension's pretty good. I like that. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's just snug this. Make sure this is all still snug down. And it is. It's pretty much snug. I want to get some more glue here. Uh, let's just put a little more glue. I don't think I'll pour it this time. Let's just dab it on from the stick. I don't need to cover that much here. Yeah. There we go. There we go. And you can see how nice and easy it is to do it that way. And we're just, oops, it slipped out. Let's tighten it back, roll it back, tighten it back up, uh, and just roll it up. And we're rolling it up. Now I'm going to need a little more glue on the end because you can't leave it out here like this. So I'm going to get some more glue, put it on the end here. more glue yeah. get it nice and wet and some glue may swish squish out but that's good that means that that you can get the paper all nice and down and glued against itself on this this round and that's what I'm doing here now when this is all done I don't leave it on here because there's still a chance you could glue it onto it and then you have to cut it off so I just slide it off and then I'll clean this up because there may be a little bit of glue residue and then I put this to dry now I'll look at this and see before I let this fully dry I just let this go for just a minute so that the glue is all tacked down I will then take my scissors and start the trimming process because if you if you can see this there's a hole there and it has rolled as you can tell from this end it's rolled like a cone which is kind of nice it kind of gives you a nice uh, end there to fit into your hand but you can, will get something like this I like cutting it down so we don't have that cone there so I to, you can wait until it's totally dry and it's kind of tough I mean you practically have well really you do have to saw it it's, it's really tough to get off so normally what I will do even at this stage it can be a little rough as you can see I will cut it back get rid of that cone and let me cut that back there that's off a little bit okay and then just roll it make sure you get it nice and rolled and what you're looking for at this stage 
is you want something that is a little bit less. A little hard to see there. Let's grab one of these pencils here. A little bit less in diameter. Now this right now to this point I might put another two rolls of paper by taking this extra sheet and put a couple of thicknesses of rolls or rounds of paper. But I'm gonna wait and see. I'm gonna let this dry overnight and probably I'll do that. Uh, but you know that's how you make your handle blank. Let's go to the next step here. Now this is a handle blank I've made previously. It's nice and firmed up. You can tell it's not deforming at all. And it's pretty much adding on some more paper, but I think it will be fine. I think it will be just fine. So I want to make a paper extender for this pencil. Not this pencil, but I have several of these brands, as you saw, that are short or getting short. And this in particular will probably be the next one I need to put into a paper ex pencil extender. So that's what I'm going to make it for is that pencil there. And I think yeah. what I'm going to do is take this piece of this half sheet of paper that we have left over. Now you can measure this or you can eyeball it. Usually I eyeball it, but since I have the ruler here, let's just go ahead and use the ruler. Normally I like using an inch and a half or thereabouts. I'll put a little mark there. And like always, I'm going to tear it. I'm going to fold and tear it. So, what we're going to do is fold that over. Make sure that the paper comes up and it's even with each other at the top. Start the creasing. I'm going to use the bone creaser. This makes it easier for me. Helps me avoid. And it gets a nice, nice crease going there. And then I'm going to tear it. Now you can cut it. Some people would prefer to cut it. And in actuality, I never, when I make the paper collar that goes onto here, which you can see on the, on this one here, you see that you have the body and then you have the paper collar. Well, this will make the paper collar that allows the pencil be joined with the extender body. Now you can trim this to any length you want. That's the, the beauty of it. You can you can customize it to your needs. What I'm going to do is is normally what I do is I take a little a bit of glue. Now you got to be careful not to glue your pencil in right away, or unless that's what you want. I mean, you can do that. And I'll put a little bit down, a little ways down from it. And the reason why I'm doing that is that way it makes it a little bit easier to start this. And, I'll, uh, and uh, you'll see here in a minute what I'm doing. I'm trying to start this. You bring up the end of the paper where the glue is and you apply the glue. Now the glue won't get up to the pencil unless you get a little robust on the glue and I've done that before. Actually there's a little bit there. We'll take that off. And this actually helps you keep that, that end down. And then I'll pull it tight. Get this up snug to each other. This is the, 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 the pencil actually brand. And, and this is the width that I want to make for this collar. So I can extend this with a, a pencil. This diameter of pencil, I should say. Uh, so... And then I roll it around. I've got like a couple rolls. I keep it nice and, and snug for both of them. And now it's time to put on some glue. Because if you do it beforehand, it will soak through the paper. And if you don't do it right away, then you'll have loose paper and you try to put a pencil in there. And you can't do it because the paper's hanging out. So you do want to just like make one, two, actually two rolls and then you start with the glue. And you want to keep it nice and snug really snug on this part. Even though when you take it out there will be some shrinkage, you still want to keep it nice and snug. Now if the paper starts you know doing a cone thing, that's fine. That's no big deal. It just helps with the transition. Um, I don't have any problem with that. 
Now, when I roll mine up and I get this collar to a certain point, which this one's getting close, I usually don't roll this whole length. It's about three fourths. Be perfectly honest with you. And uh, I'm almost there. You'll see here in a minute. And then I'll cut it and, and then let this dry. Well, actually, a couple cuts actually. So, yeah. As I thought, this is pretty much all I need. It will keep its shape. It will be nice and sturdy. I just don't like putting a lot of thickness on this uh, paper collar here. That allows the uh, that holds the pencil in against the uh, body of the extender. All right. And you want to make sure it gets all... I think the technical term is smooshed down so the paper is really nicely contacted with the other with glue. And I'm going to pull this out. That is pretty snug and that's the way I want it. Now that's nice. But as you can see, how far down does that go? That's, yeah. And I don't want to go down quite that far, so I'm going to do a little trimming. And I always like trimming while it's wet because... That way I can do it with the scissors and not have to pull out saws. Now it does mush things down. You just, if you trim it, you just bring it back out, bring it back into shape. It's good. This is going to be a good one. You can see how nicely it, it's not moving. It's nice and tight. And you see that when I bring it out, there's a little bit of a, a pop there. So this is going to be a real nice one. So this is... And, and having this transition here doesn't bother me. Now, if it does bother me, all you have to do is take a piece of paper and add that to the handle. And it will come up even to this. And then it will be just one continuous item. Uh, one continuous diameter. But this really doesn't bother me. It's nice and smooth. It's just no no heavy ridge or anything there. It's nice and light. It's For me, it's just perfect. And I just wanted to share that with you. So now you know how to make your own paper extenders and what, for a few pennies. Uh, I know this sheet of paper is probably two or three cents at most. Probably not even three. Yeah, two or three cents at most. Maybe up to five cents. And then maybe a penny or, or two of glue. And you've got, well, for at most a dime or less, you have your pencil extender. And I don't think that's something you can be. And it's fully customized to your needs and your preferences and the links and, and stuff for your hand so you don't have to worry about it. The other thing, you know, you saw how I was making a tube. You can take a piece of paper like this longer, of course, and take your pencil and roll it up. It'll probably be at least twice this long. Roll it a couple times, you know, around or two or three, and then put some of the glue on like we did before, and you'll make a little tube. And when you get done with the tube, you can crimp the end. That will become when you make that tube and then crimp down the end with the glue and you let it dry, and then sometimes you'll trim it up here. That can become a very nice pencil point protector so when you go out and you draw and you put this either in your case or whatever or you, nothing will happen to break the pencil or nothing will come through and stab you or anything like that uh, it's just a, a good thing so um, I hope you enjoyed the pencil extender and uh, if you have any comments uh, you know note them below I also have on my link to my blog I just started up along with this uh, channel. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Come back and join me for the uh, rest of my journeys, including the drawing, the South Florida sightseeing, the bicycle hangouts. We're just going to have fun.